Hi everybody, Tony Caridi along with Jed Drenning. Don't look now, the month of July is here, which means football season is very quickly approaching and we're on the clock with Jed. Jed, a lot of things going on even though it's the off season. First off, we want to cover uh, the Big East Conference. What's caught your eye? What are you finding interesting? What should we be looking ahead to as uh, football starts to go? I think first and foremost, Tony, one of the interesting things or developments this offseason versus last season in the Big East, the Big East had kind of turned the corner to develop this reputation as being more of an offensive kind of kind of conference, you know, with the likes of the Pat Weiss and the Steve Slaytons and the Ray Rices across the board. Whereas I think what we're going to be seeing this year, collectively at least, across the board within the Big East, are more defensive-oriented teams, more grinded-out teams, and probably a lot more of those 17 to 13 style games. When you look at the top-tier teams in the conference, your West Virginias, your Rutgers, your South Florida's, your Pitcher, your Cincinnati's, uh, for that matter. Cincinnati's probably the only exception. They lost their entire defense, have a new coordinator, but. By and large, the Big East is probably going to turn back to its defensive roots and be more of a, of a rugged league. All right, let's talk uh, specifically about West Virginia here. Mm -hmm. uh, developments going on over the last several weeks. Uh, the freshmen are coming in. Mm -hmm. They're working out. Geno Smith's injury, all of those things kind of add them up. Uh, what's your take on what you're seeing? Well, it's, first of all, I hope that the Geno Smith in injury isn't uh, representative of the, the Ben Roethlisberger injury and, and a harbinger of things to come during that Steeler offseason after their Super Bowl. Let's hope that's not the case. But... There's a lot of things to consider uh, going into this, this season for West Virginia. Practice is barely a month away, just over a month away. Hard to imagine. Jarrett Brown, how long has he waited for this opportunity? And finally, it is upon him. Uh, everybody's going to be excited to see what Jarrett Brown can do. A tremendous amount of upside on that uh, with that guy. A lot of people feel, for that matter, he's a more polished, more pure NFL prospect than Pat White was. Uh, so that's obviously going to be one major storyline throughout the course of this season. The offensive line. Uh, first of all, can we replenish what was lost? And second of all, if we can, can we find any synergy or level of continuity with that group? As you know, you don't need a great offensive lineman to have a great offensive line. You need a great unit. So if we find five guys shuffle in there to work together to find a way to get it done and spring Noel Devine, and speaking of Noel Devine, can we find some depth behind Noel Devine? Who's going to step it up and be the next guy, the go-to guy? You know, the, the Quincy Wilson behind Avon. That type of depth is what we need at that position right now. In addition to that, there's a lot of of excitement and there's a lot of question marks on the perimeter. You know, we saw what West Lions did in the spring game. Is that West Lions going to be the West Lions that's going to step it up as a senior and get it done and make plays like he made uh, on that Saturday afternoon in April? We have the young, the youngsters coming and the newcomers. Which of those guys is going to be hasty? Which of those guys is going to come in and be an impact right out of the gate? So if those guys can do that, coupled with Tyler Urban and some of these other names, uh, you have an opportunity to do some interesting things offensively. But the true storyline, as we all know, at least suggestively, lies on the defensive side of the football. The lion's share of your veteran players are back. The young players that were young last year are young no more. They're longer in the tooth. What that does, it puts you in position, at least Jeff Castillo and that defensive staff, to be a little more exotic, a little more creative schematically. If we did have a shortcoming last year defensively, it probably lied in the fact that we couldn't necessarily finish the job and always get off the field. We were a bend but not break unit, which I'll take that six days a week, twice on Sunday. But if you want to finish that off, how do you do that? Well, you get people off the field on third down, which means you win on first down. And I like the opportunity of having Reed Williams back, the impact he's going to make, all the kids we do have back, kids like Robert Sands. Will Robert Sands rest on his laurels, or will he continue to get better? That's not going to be the barometer that you look at with a kid like that. If some of those younger kids can continue to improve and get in the mix, and we get Reed Williams, that linebacking quarter, produce like we expect them to, because we have playmakers at every level. All right, kneeled on down the line. If you can do that, start winning those first downs, ergo being in better position defensively on second down, forcing longer third down situations, you can finish the job on third down and be a much more well-rounded unit across the board and believe it or not, possibly be even better than we were last year. The script 12 months ago said what? We've got Pat back, we've got the entire offensive line back, we've got Devine back, but man, that defense has a lot of question marks. And you and I have to discuss this ad nauseum, Tony. The football gods hate scripts, you know. So right now you're thinking if we're going to win a lot of football games, it's probably going to necessarily have to be the 21 to 10, 17, 14 variety. The truth probably lies somewhere in the middle, quite frankly. Well, those are just some of the things that are scurrying around our minds as we get set for another Mountaineer football season. When we uh, return on our next uh, video chat, we will talk about opponent number one for West Virginia. Liberty is coming into Morgantown on Saturday, September the 5th, and we will begin the breakdown of Liberty. Thanks for being with us, along with Jed Drenning. I'm Tony Caridi on WVMetroNews.com.